Hey, this is Joe from Home Studio Corner. The name of the game today is compression, specifically stock compressors, meaning the ones that come with your software, versus more analog compressors. The, this, we're still talking plugins, but the kind that are modeled after cool vintage analog hardware. We're going to listen to the difference here in a minute, but first, a quick story. Now, I've been guilty of saying things like this over the years. You can get great sounding recordings and mixes using minimal equipment. And that's still absolutely true, but I went too far in that direction. I talked a little bit about this in a recent video about things I was wrong about, but it's kind of like when you, if I go to my Facebook feed, I will see posts from people that are super right wing and people that are super left wing. And you tend to think that's everyone falls into one of those two camps, but in my experience at least, most people are a lot more kind of middle than those extremes, right? And that's true in a lot of areas of life, right? Sometimes I tend to want to be all or nothing into things, and a lot of times there's a middle ground that's usually better overall. So that leads me to this story. So for years, if you've been following my channel for a, a, probably five, six, seven years, you probably saw for a long period there all I ever used when it comes to EQ and compression all I used were the stock EQ and compressor plugins inside of Studio One. Uh, I didn't see a need to go with more, and it was kind of a twofold problem for me. One, I just wanted to prove a point. And I think there was some good behind that because I was able to show people that you can use the very simple tools and get fantastic results if you know what you're doing, if you know how to listen, if all the other pieces of the puzzle are in play, then you can get great sounds with minimal equipment. But there was also a stubbornness to me that just didn't want to devote the time or the energy into trying out the other plugins out there. My buddy Pete, we'd talk on the phone and he'd say, bro, you got to try some of these analog plugins. They sound so good. And I would kind of turn my nose up and say, well, I, don't, I don't want to. I don't need to. I can get good sounds without it. So here's another thing that's true. So it is true that you can make great music with minimal equipment. But what's also true is Eric Clapton. Can he make great sounding guitar tones with a $100 guitar? Absolutely. Does he tour with a $100 guitar? No. Because there's something about good, nice equipment that does kind of one of two things. First of all, it has a tone that maybe you can't get out of another guitar, right? If Eric is playing a Strat, he could grab a Les Paul. He's not going to get that Strat tone out of the Les Paul no matter how nice of a guitar it is, right? Uh, and the second thing is ease. So... While, yes, Eric Clapton could play a you know, $99 guitar and probably make it sound pretty cool, he's going to have to work pretty hard for that tone. And it comes a little easier when you're using nicer equipment. So that's what I would say has been my experience when I finally started trying out some of these analog-style plugins. Fun fact, they're still technically stock plugins because they're included with Studio One, but I went from using just the Pro EQ and the Compressor plugin to using some of the plugins inside of the Fat Channel, which initially were just a couple modeled after a couple of different popular analog compressors and a couple of different popular EQs. And I just used those for a while. And I, I discovered that, I'm going to get to the, we're going to listen to it in just a second. What I discovered was I could get sounds that I couldn't get with these analog plugins compared to the just plain old plain Jane stock plugins. Uh, and also I was able to dial in sounds a little bit quicker. So I had the same experience as say an Eric Clapton with a cheap guitar versus a nice guitar. And, and I still reach for the Pro EQ and the Pro Compressor because they're really handy in lots of different situations. But when it comes to creating different tones, I found that some of the analog style plugins were really helpful. So today, this is for you if you're in that place of wondering what the difference is or you feel so confused you don't know which one to reach for. Uh, I want to help and see if you can hear the difference between a, a, we'll show a drum kit with an analog style compressor and then I'll play it through a normal stock compressor. See if you can hear the differences. If you can't, that's totally fine. That's part of the journey. But if you can, maybe this will help inform your decisions moving forward next time you go to reach for a compressor. Okay, I know that was a long preamble slash introduction and people always tell me in the comments, you talk too much. I would rather give you all the information as completely as I can in case this is the only video you ever watch from me rather than just dive into something that doesn't have the right context. Context is huge, people. Anyway, here is a drum mix from a most recent mix of mine. This plug-in here, that's the fat channel that I was talking about. This is on my drum bus. So all my drums are going to this plug-in. They're getting a little bit of a high-pass filter at 42 hertz. They're going through this tube compressor here. 
and then they're going through this state space model vintage EQ here. Okay, let's just take a listen real quick to familiarize ourselves with what we have here. I picked the part of the song where Tim is going absolutely nuts, and I love it. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. First of all, I'm gonna turn this um, I'm gonna turn this high pass off for a second for the sake of this experiment because it'll make sense in just a second. So let's listen again. Make sure that didn't change much. Lovely. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab. The compressor plugin over here in the browser, I'm going to drop it above the fat channel because you'll note in the fat channel, the compressor is coming before the EQ. So I want to swap out the compressor, uh, but just in the same spot in the chain, if that makes sense. So I'm going to take just a second to dial in this compressor with similar sounds. We'll open up both so I can see both here. Just try to, um, even honestly with the sound off for a second, I'm going to hit play. And I'm going to try to just, just copy the setting. So this is set to, looks like 3.44 to 1. Now, you're never going to be able to copy these things entirely, but we're going to try our best. Um, I don't know what the knee setting is. So we'll leave that alone. The attack is 32 milliseconds. By the way, I'm right-clicking to show that. I didn't even know you could do that to show an exact number. The release is 159. Okay. Pretty standard for a drum mix for me. And then if I hit play on this, we'll see we're getting, oops, I'll turn this one off. We're getting anywhere from five to seven dB of gain reduction there. So let's just mimic that on this compressor. We'll turn this one off, turn this one on. We'll pull the threshold down until we're getting about the same amount of compression. All right, pull it down. Dun, 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 dun. That's about right. All right, makeup gain is 6.64 dB, so we'll copy that over as well. And now let's actually unmute the channel now and let's listen to this compressor versus this one. So what I'll do is I'll hit play and you'll see me when I turn this power knob off and then turn this one on, that's when I'm switching between compressors, okay? All right, here we go. Interesting. Let's do that one more time because it's really intriguing to me. Biggest places where I hear a difference. I'm not going to tell you what I hear yet. Listen to what's happening in the low end and also in the high end. Ugh, that's like those are all the frequencies, Joe. But specifically like the low, like the kick drum and like the cymbals and like the top end of the snare. Listen specifically to those. We'll do it backwards this time. We'll start with the uh, vintage compressor here, the tube compressor. Then I'll switch over to the regular compressor. Interesting. I find this fascinating stuff. And I encourage you, do these kinds of experiments in your studio. Um, because doing this back and forth, you can do it on YouTube and it's helpful, right? But what I really hope to do with these videos inspire you to go do this on a mix you're working on and set it up between two plugins, listening to your speakers, listening on your headphones, whatever you normally use to mix, uh, because you're going to start to hear those subtle differences a little bit. So for me, what I hear is it's not like night and day different, like, oh my goodness, it sounds terrible on the left and amazing on the right. It's more that there's just a there's a cleanliness to the stock compressor where it's like it's doing its job, it's turning things down, it's doing like the, the textbook definition of what a compressor does. It takes signals and turns them down and then attack and release and the ratio and threshold determine how much of that is happening. With the other compressor, it does all of that. It has all of those controls, but it adds in this kind of a vintagey warmth to it that's maybe absent in the regular compressor. Specifically, the low end has this beefiness to it 
that's not there in the stock compressor. So when I dial in this compressor with the exact same tones, I like this sound of this drum mix better than the other one. With the other one, I may have to go back in and add saturation or mess with my EQ more or something to get it to sound as good as it sounds with this vintage compressor. Let's listen to that one more time. Now there may be a little bit of a volume difference. Let's, let's make up for that a little bit by turning up the makeup gain of this second compressor. And let's do that same listen again. I think doing this over and over is helpful because one of these times it might click for you. Here we go. To me, it's it's not, it is subtle. And again, I don't even know if this is gonna come across on YouTube. Make sure you're watching at the highest resolution. That's the best sound quality. Um, but to me, even in the snare, there's a thing going on there. Listen to the snare here. And then listen to the snare here. It's almost like the it's a little punchier, like it's coming it's reaching out to me a little bit more, the snare is, and it feels like it has this extra lower octave that's just not there in the stock compressor. I can't explain why that is. I'm guessing it has to do with the way analog circuitry reacts versus more digital circuitry. Does that make sense? Listen, one more time to the snare drum. I just, I want you to hear it. We'll start with the stock compressor. When I switch to the analog compressor, listen to the very deepest parts of the snare drum. Like the snare hits here, dung. But listen down here, like in the, there's something extra that's happening down there, like a subharmonic almost. Here we go. So if you didn't hear that, I encourage you to either rewind this video, listen in the best listening environment you have, and just do this a few times, okay? Pay attention to when I'm clicking things on and off and really try to hear those differences. Um, but also do this experiment on your own that might help even more. Uh, even if you don't have one of these plugins in your system, you can usually get a demo of nicer plugins so you can test it out and do this A, B, and see if you hear a difference. It's legitimate that you may not hear a difference at all, and that's fine. We're all on a different continuum of being able to hear these things. But for me, my experience, especially after having these plugins for several years and doing lots and lots of work with them, I enjoy the tone through that red compressor more than that blue one. That doesn't mean the blue one's bad. I use it all the time for specific scenarios where I need a very clean compressor that just adjusts volume and doesn't do anything else. It's wonderful for that. It has a lot of cool features that allow me to do that. Same with EQ. But with this compressor, I'm hearing it's like it's adding things to the sound that make me happy. Kind of like if you picked up a, a Les Paul and a Taylor and a Telly, a Les Paul and a Taylor, a Les Paul and a Strat and a Telly, one of them's probably gonna connect with you more than the others. And also which amp you plug into is gonna change the way you connect with that. I connect with this drum tone with this compressor more than I connect with that one. Both are fine, both are good. They're identical settings as close as you can get but hopefully you can hear there's a little more mojo happening on this one. And maybe you like the clean one better. Maybe that's too much mojo. Maybe you're more along the lines of maybe more in like a purist jazz form where you don't maybe want there to be that much compression. Maybe you're saying, Joe, this is too much compression, period. Don't compress your drums, you moron. All of those are fair. I'd love to hear from you in the comments. Let me know what you think about this. Could you hear a difference? And did you prefer one over the other? And have you done this type of experiment in your studio with your equipment? Because that's where you're going to really be able to hear this and gain a lot of benefit and kind of almost wisdom from doing this. So leave a comment and let me know. Also, if you haven't checked out my free five-step mixing guide, it's a free PDF. I think it's like six pages. You could read it in one sitting. It'll help you frame how you approach mixing uh, in a better way if you don't already have a nice, very specific process to guide you every time you go to mix a song. You can check that out at fivestepmix.com. Otherwise, thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.